Hey guys, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be super fun. I am doing something that I've never done before, but has been heavily requested. Today I'm gonna be painting Van Gogh's The Starry Night onto a cake. In the past I've done paintings with frosting before, but this will be my first painting directly onto a cake. Now, before we start, I wanna give a big thanks to OGX for sponsoring this part of the video. OGX is a brand that I have used for years and I've even partnered with them to make some really fun videos before. My hair is naturally like curly, wavy. I've been using their coconut curl shampoo and conditioner. It's my favorite. As well as their Argan Oil of Morocco. It's a penetrating oil and hairspray. This is my favorite hairspray. I'm wearing it today. Last looks, last looks. Their shampoos are now reformulated to be pH balanced, are paraben free, and have a sulfate free cleansing system that reduces frizz. OGX has over 30 different formulas with hair benefits for each. This makes them perfect for my long days of filming. I love how soft it makes my hair feel. I just love that they have shampoos that smell like coconut because it reminds me of all the good memories I have visiting Hawaii. If you'd like to check out what OGX has to offer for you and your hair, click the link in the description down below. And again, a big thanks to OGX for sponsoring this video. All right, now without further ado, let's get painting. In front of me is my canvas. I've got a half sheet of cake. It's a white cake recipe from my cookbook, The Nerdy Nummies Cookbook. I'll be posting all of the ingredients and the recipe in the description down below. So if you wanna follow along and use my recipe, you can. I have also iced it with a Swiss meringue buttercream so it is ready to go. And today we are using a Swiss meringue buttercream versus an American buttercream because it just doesn't crust very much. It's more silky smooth and it behaves more like an oil paint, just like Van Gogh would have wanted. The style of art that we see in Starry Night is called impasto. It's an Italian word and it's basically where the strokes are really thick with the brush and they have some volume on them. So you're supposed to see the strokes. They're not hidden, they're not blended, which is also why I thought it would be perfect for icing. And as part of the canvas, we've also placed the half sheet of cake onto a cake board and covered the edges with fondant. I chose to do a black fondant so that the focus wasn't really on the sides of the cake and it was more on the painting the cake itself. Here's a really cool image that I'm gonna upload onto my website. I will put a link, so if you wanna print it off at home, you can. It's basically a breakdown of the colors of where I'm gonna place the icings and where they go. I've simplified the design and the colors so it will give you a good reference when you're painting. Painting. Also, I am following this. This is my cheat sheet. I went really extra, you know, that's how I like to do it. I used a ton of colors, but if you wanted to use less colors, it will still look very similar to the painting. Lastly, I've done a light tracing on top of my cake canvas of where the basic shapes are going to live. I just used a small toothpick and gently all over the cake. This gives me a rough start, like a rough draft, and I can change things a little bit as I go if I want to. I don't think it's cheap in art because I think it's just your outline. All right, let me show you all the colors that I made. So many! <laughs> I've put them all into piping bags, and I'm gonna be using different spatulas to get the look. I'm so excited. I'm gonna paint on top of a cake for the first time. We're starting with color 14. It's a beautiful blue, and we're gonna pipe the sky. A good tip here is to pipe an outline of the entire area, and then we're gonna use a spatula to gently cover the top. Once you've got an outline, we're gonna fill, which is called flooding. We just wanna do a big zigzag like this. We don't need a lot of ice because again, we just want a thin layer and doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be covering this in so many layers. Then take your little spatula. You can use any kind that you're comfortable with and we're just gonna spread thinly. Just finished the first color. I'm so excited. It's already starting to look like a painting and now I am on to color number two. This is number 10. It's a lighter blue. And again, we're doing the same technique. I'm outlining the shape and then I'm gonna fill it in with the spatula. All the prep work that we did makes this feel literally stress-free and like one of those adult coloring books. It's amazing. I would highly recommend this. Got the second section done. Now I'm gonna be doing this a couple more times with 
with a couple different color blues. Same idea, outline and then fill it in. The top of the cake is almost all covered. I'm gonna use this darker green, it's number 13 for the tree and then some lighter colors for the stars. We've got light blues and like creams and yellows for the stars right here. I've left those for last, but now let's get to the tree. Same technique, outline and fill it in. We did it, we've got our base layer, the first layer of all the beautiful colors of this painting on the cake. And if you look at the cake just right now, I would be able to tell what painting this is based off of. It already looks so cool, it has a little bit of textures, but now we're gonna be adding accent colors throughout the painting and then texturing them. I'm gonna be using these really small spatulas, maybe some bigger, I have a bunch of them, just to get some really cool texture like the original painting. And if you're following along at home for accent colors, there are these little dots on the sheet. So we've got the main colors right here, and then as you'll see like here, here's these little dots are going to be the accent colors. And you can just look at his beautiful painting and kind of play with it, make it your own, like see where he's added some bright pops and swirl it in. So I'm gonna be starting at the top, adding accent colors, working my way down, and then the next step, we'll add brush strokes and some texture. This part is not an exact science, so you can really be creative and have fun with it and just see what you like. No two paintings are exactly identical, so this is where you can really put your own spin on it. I also really love this part right here because it's gonna give it a lot of depth and dimension, and you're gonna see this painting come alive. I'm starting with the stars. As you can see over here and here, I've done two. We're just adding a little bit more color and I'm not blending them yet because again, we're using a Swiss meringue buttercream, which is really silky and it won't crust. So you can add your color and do texture later. That's okay with this buttercream. Over here on the star, you can see, I'm just gonna add some accent. Just add a little bit. I'm starting with a little bit because if I wanna add more at any time, I can. It's easier to add more than it is to remove. So I'm starting with a little bit and then working my way up. Just gonna put some little bits here. And this is where you can really have fun and pick colors if you want to look really similar to the original painting or make it your own or just come close that's fine too the stars are accented and now I'm gonna accent the sky and it's the night sky it's starry night so I'm gonna be adding some black and some darker blues to our already dark sky just a little bit Our cake is almost there. We've added all of our accent colors to give it a lot of depth. And now we are going to blend and add texture with, I've got some spatulas and some artist tools. These are palette knives, very similar to a spatula, especially this one. Look at that, it just looks like an offset spatula. But a lot of people are decorating cake with these palette knives. And if you wanna see some videos of that, let me know in the comments down below. It's really popular and today is the first day that I'm really gonna be doing it on a cake. So now take your palette knife or spatula and start blending, but you don't wanna overdo it because we want to see all the beautiful colors that we added to the cake and we don't want our colors to smush together too much. Using your palette knife or spatula, you're just gonna put some gentle pressure. We're gonna go in the direction of the texture that you see in the starry night painting because this is all about adding the textures of the painting and you want to keep your palette knife or spatula clean so in between each stroke I'm gonna be wiping it off on a damp paper towel or on the edge of a bowl whatever you want to do because you really don't want to blend the colors too much you want these colors to stand out and pop as I'm doing this, I'm not pressing down using the tool. I'm just letting the weight of the tool do that. And I'm just lightly dragging in the direction that we want to go. I'm 
just finished doing all of the palette knife strokes over our whole piece of art. It is looking amazing. And the last thing that I'm gonna do to just add a little bit more definition to this piece of art is I've added just a little bloop, 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 blops of yellow icing to look like the lights in the windows of the town. And in a piping bag, I've got a little bit of black icing with the number one tip for more control. And we're gonna pipe smooth lines to look like the little houses in the village. While you're smoothing some things out, if a little area of the cake you pressed too hard and got down to the white icing, I just went in and added a little bit more color here and there all over the cake. I didn't need to do it too much, but if you ever mess up, that's a good thing to know that you don't need to worry. You can just add a little bit more color in a place that you press too hard. Let's build a town. I'm gonna start with this tall building right here. It looks like a little steeple. Maybe this is the little chapel here. Now the cake is all done, it is all painted. I really wanted to make a frame around the top of our cake. Frames are completely optional, you don't need to do it if you don't want to, and you can make any kind of frame you want. I love gold frames, they're my favorite. So I've got some gold fondant. Roll out your strips of fondant, we will need four long rectangles. Now I lost my fondant gutter when I moved, I don't know where I put it. It had multiple rollies, it looks like a quad pizza cutter, and you can get really even strips. I'm gonna look through my drawers and find it, but that's okay because you can also use a sharp cutting knife if you don't have one of those fancy tools you can just do this just eyeball it cut off the top and bottom the rounded edges because I want a nice clean edge so this is all you need to do just roll out you'll need four strips for each side of your frame and then I've got these really cute silicone molds I love molds I am NOT above using a mold I use them all the time to make cute little flowers look at that it looks like the texture of a fancy picture frame so a good tip is to pre roll it about the size that you'll need so you won't get a lot of excess and you don't have to try to cut off the back oh I've done that I've overfilled these molds many times you spend so much time trying to cut off the excess and then you ruin the design it's no good all right so I'm gonna pre roll this roll 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 and before you use your mold you're gonna take a little paintbrush dip it in a little cornstarch and just lightly dust the inside of there so that the fondant doesn't stick inside of there and line it up press it in there really get in there Boop. cut off the excess then oh this is the fun part you get to peel it out and as you can see, there's a few parts where I made it a little bit overflowed. So I'm just gonna cut those off with a sharp knife. And look at this, you can line it up and place it on top of your border right here. To get fondant to stick to fondant, you can use a little bit of water and your paintbrush to get them to stick together. Or if they're still warm and tacky enough, they may just stick on their own. Boop, just like that. Also for the decorations in the corners of these beautiful frames, I'm gonna be using this design. Again, use a little cornstarch, powder in there. Boop, 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 boop. We don't want it to stick. And the best thing to do is to roll a piece of fondant into the shape so that it doesn't overflow. So that's the only tricky part. So you just wanna really get it in there. Because this design is so detailed, it's not like a circle, you wanna make sure that you don't have any excess fondant hanging over the side. So really just take the time to squish it in there. All right, once we got it in there, then again, you just pop it out and gently, gently, gently. Boo, oh my gosh, look how fancy that is. And this is gonna be our corner piece to my frame. So I'm gonna make four of these and I'm gonna line them up on the corner edges of the frame. It's just gonna be gorgeous. And not only am I using gold fondant, but I wanted the frame to be even more gold, really shimmer and shine. And the way you can do that is by using a little bit of gold luster dust. Luster dust is edible. It's like edible sparkles and it's easy to use. All you need is to mix it with a little bit of alcohol. This is vodka. You can use almond or lemon extract as well because that has a little bit of alcohol in it. And you just take a little bit of the powder, mix it with the alcohol. Oh, look how beautiful that is and then paint on top of the fondant all over. I'm gonna do this all over. Look at those beautiful sparkles, are you kidding me? Gorgeous. You want all of it to sparkle, it's so beautiful. Luster dust is one of my favorite things. I'm just gonna start making frames for art in my house and it's all gonna be out of fondant. And those are the basics for making the frame and you're just gonna put them around the edges of your cake. Ta-da! Here is the cake that we made to look like an iconic painting. Van Gogh's The Starry Night. I love it! <laughs>
I've never painted on a cake and it turned out perfect. This type of painting works really well with icing and frosting. I think also covering the sides of the cake with black fondant and the board completely covering the cake board, even black ribbon on the side, really makes the cake itself stand out. It's like the only thing that pops out and everything else kind of fades away. And look how cool the frame is. It came out perfect. It's that beautiful gold frame with lots of detail that I love. I actually think I have a frame like this. I have framed a movie poster, The Nutcracker from the Seattle Ballet, which my dad took me to many of times growing up, and I'm pretty sure this is the frame that I picked out from Michaels. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. A big thank you to you all for suggesting that I try painting on an actual cake and not just a canvas, because this was amazing. This was so much fun. Also, let me know in the comments below if there's any other paintings that you would like to see me try, because this was so much fun and I'm really impressed. It's incredible. This is blowing my mind. I just cut myself a little piece of cake. The most iconic part, I feel like the moon. But I'm so excited. I'm about to eat art you guys right now here we go mm. oh my gosh Swiss meringue buttercream is my favorite icing in the world it's light and fluffy almost like a whipped cream but it just tastes so good and buttery mm -mm. all right again I hope you guys enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments down below what other videos you'd like to see all right bye bye and if you'd like to watch any other videos you can click up here or up here. Or up here. Up here. Up here. Up here. Up here. Bye.